हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे माय टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज द स्प्रेड ऑफ ट्यूमर सो टुडे आई विल टीच यू द हाउ मेलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर विल स्प्रेड सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सी द वीडियो इन द हाई क्वालिटी यू कैन चेंज द सेटिंग इन द यूट्यूब एंड यू कैन सेट द हाई क्वालिटी सो दैट द इमेज क्वालिटी विल नॉट गेट हेम्पर्ड सो लेट स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन द स्प्रेड ऑफ ट्यूमर so you might be familiar that uh, only malignant tumor can spread usually benign tumor doesn't spread uh, usually benign tumor can compress the surrounding tissue right but it cannot spread only the malignant tumor can spread distally or locally so that's why we will discuss the spread of tumor of malignant tumor only the benign tumor will not spread okay so the cardinal feature of the malignancy is the local invasion and the destruction of the adjacent tissue that is called as direct invasion uh, as we have discussed suppose you are having the tumor here in the forearm then it then it can invade and destruct the surrounding tissue it can infiltrate the surrounding tissue that is known as direct invasion clear and if this tumor is spread distally to the particular organs like that of liver uh like that of kidney like that in a spleen in the adrenal gland uh, then it is known as metastasis or it if spread to the lymph nodes uh, then that process is known by the name metastasis means it is the distant spread of the tumor that is called as metastasis so that is regarding the peculiarity of the malignant tumor so invasion and the metastasis are the two most important feature of malignancy and we will learn how such spread occurs right i will describe the molecular basis in the separate lecture but today we will discuss how such a metastasis means spread occurs so first we will start with local invasion and the destruction so it is called as a direct spread to the adjacent tissue a uh, usually benign tumor as we have discussed the benign tumor is encapsulated so it can only compress the surrounding tissue it cannot invade or infiltrate the surrounding tissue right only malignant tumor can invade the surrounding tissue but in the early stage malignant tumor might just compress the tissue it might not infiltrate clear but most of the malignant tumor actually can invade and infiltrate and destruct the surrounding tissue so remember that word that can be asked in the mcq that suppose if any tumor is invading the surrounding tissue then it can be benign or malignant so your answer will be the malignant tumor now we have to remember that a uh, malignant tumor can spread via the invasion into the blood vessel through the perineal perineural tissue through the lymphatics through the bone etc so it can invade all the structures like that but you have to remember that uh, there are three tissue in the body that is very resistance for metastasis the first is collagen tissue second one is cartilage and third one is elastic tissue uh, these three tissue are very resistance for metastasis and that might be the reason that arteries are very resistant for the metastasis so the tumor cell usually cannot invade the artery usually it invading the veins so these three tissue are resistant for metastasis okay okay so as we have discussed uh, the malignant tumor is characterized by the features of anaplasia if you have not seen that lecture then uh, see that video also in which i have mentioned the difference between the benign and malignant tumor so nomenclature of the tumor and the difference between benign and malignant tumor video is posted separately you can see that video the malignancy is characterized by the features of anaplasia and now we will see about the metastasis the peculiarity of the malignancy is by the three features it will show the features of anaplasia it will invade the surrounding tissue and it will spread distally that is called as metastasis so these three are the cardinal features of malignant tumor clear and now you have to you might be familiar that benign tumor always never metastatize and all malignant tumor 
can always metastatize benign cannot metastatize but the malignant tumor can always metastatize but there are two main exceptions in which the malignant tumor cannot metastatize that is the glioma of the brain and the basal cell carcinoma of the skin this two tumor although malignant it will not metastatize the glioma of brain and the basal cell carcinoma of the skin it can be asked as an mcq so remember that these two tumor although malignant will not metastatize now you have to remember that uh, usually a large and aggressive tumor uh, will be metastatized clear the metastasis is of a large and the highly pleomorphic tumor is the usual rule if the tumor is large and aggressive then usually it will metastatize but sometimes this this will not happen sometimes what happen your tumor is very small in size and not much pleomorphic it is not much pleomorphic then also it can metastatize and that is known by the name occult metastasis clear so that is the case of occult metastasis of the small tumor sometime you might encounter such case so hope uh, your funda will be clear regarding the metastasis of the tumor so the metastasis is always the feature of malignant tumor remember that the metastasis happen only with the malignant tumor and there are two main exceptions of the metastasis although it is malignant tumor it will not metastasize that is glioma of the brain and the basal cell carcinoma of the skin now we will see which are the roots of metastasis so actually there are the six root of spread by the tumor i have divided the metastasis roots in the six portions to better understand the first portion the first root of metastasis is a lymphatic spread a second one is hematogenous spread a third one is the seeding by the cavity that is transcelomic spread fourth one is the spread via cerebrospinal fluid fifth is spread by the epithelial line surface and the final one is the implantation so these are the six basic uh, root of metastasis i have prepared it in a easy way to understand it so that you can easily understand so just go with the uh, go with my ppt so first we will discuss regarding the lymphatic spread the tumor spread via lymphatic root so you have to remember that uh, usually carcinoma prefer this root and can you tell me what is carcinoma yes you are right the malignancy of the epithelial cell is known by the name carcinoma so the all epithelial malignancy will usually prefer this root for metastasis but it is not the rule that you have to remember it is the usual preferred root for epithelial malignancy that is by the lymphatic spread now uh, there is two method for this lymphatic spread i mean lymphatic spread can occur in a two way uh, first is lymphatic permeation and the second one is lymphatic emboli so what is permeation name itself suggest in which the tumor cell invade into the lymphatic channel through the wall this is the wall of lymphatic channel and the tumor will spread through the wall that is known as lymphatic permeation but sometime what happen uh, the tumor cell might be detached from the tumor mass this is the tumor mass clear and sometime what happen the tumor cell might be detached from it and via the lymphatic it will carried out as a emboli and then they will reach up to the lymph node you might know that any solid gaseous or liquid mass within the blood or the lymph is known as by the name emboli so the tumor can spread as a tumor emboli and via lymph lymph fluid it can reach reach into the different lymph nodes so that is known as lymphatic emboli root clear now usually what happen when this tumor emboli this is the tumor tumor cells right when they will reach into the lymph node this is your lymph node it will invade first through the subcapsular sinus 
below the capsule there is a presence of sinus in which uh, there can be presence of macrophages as well so the tumor emboli invade through the subcapsular sinus and gradually they will involve whole lymph node so that can be asked in a mcq okay now usually what happens if you are having the lymph node metastasis from the malignancy then they will prefer to metastatize in the nearby lymph node so the nearby regional lymph node involve first in the metastasis that is obvious suppose you are having the breast carcinoma then usually it will prefer to spread in the nearby regional lymph node that is axillary lymph node so that is known by the name regional lymph node metastasis it is known by regional lymph node metastasis so if any patient present with ca breast and if there is a enlargement of the nearby axillary node then it could be metastasis and it should be sent for histopathological examination but see this is not always the rule the enlarged lymph node sometime might be due to reactive enlargement why reactive enlargement of nearby lymph node occurs so here is the explanation in the malignancy there can be formation of necrotic debris clear there can be necrosis necrotic debris and there can be presence of tumor antigens so to remove this necrotic debris and antigen the phagocytes in the lymph node can get activated and they will do the phagocytotic function and that's why reactive lymph node enlargement can happen so the lymph node enlargement doesn't always indicate malignancy it can be reactive regional lymph node enlargement that you have to keep in mind okay now it is uh, interesting that uh, sometime what happen regional nearby lymph node is not involved as i have discussed the usually carcinoma prefer to spread into the nearby regional lymph node but sometime what happen uh, they will not involve the regional lymph node but they involve involve the distal lymph nodes or the lymph node that is not nearby that is known by the name skip metastasis and why such a skipping of the metastasis happen so that might be because of a connection between the venous and lymphatic channel suppose this is your venous channel and this one is your lymphatic channel uh, if there is anastomosis between this venous and lymphatic channel uh, then sometime the tumor cannot spread to the nearby lymph node but it can spread distally as well and sometime what happen uh, you might have obstruction in the regional lymph node by the inflammation or radiotherapy if your nearby lymphatic channel is obstructed then what will happen the tumor will spread to the other lymph node where the channel is open so the obliteration of the lymphatic channel by the inflammation or radiation also can be the reason so these are the two reason why skipping of the metastasis happen it can be asked as an mcq okay now suppose if uh, you are having the lymph node metastasis in a retrograde manner i mean regional lymph node is not involved but you are having the lymph node metastasis in a retrograde manner away from the primary tumor then it is known by the name retrograde metastasis for example uh, this is your human body clear and if you are having the carcinoma prostate and usually it metastatizes to the nearby aortic node clear it can spread in the inguinal region but if it spread distally in a retrograde manner to the supraclavicular lymph node this is your clavicle and above that there is a presence of supraclavicular node so if this carcinoma prostate spread in a retrograde manner to the supraclavicular node uh, then it is the called as a retrograde metastasis and involvement of such supraclavicular node is known by the name wachos node it is known as an wachos node so the spread of carcinoma prostate or carcinoma testis male genital organ cancer if spread into the supraclavicular lymph node then it is known as a retrograde metastasis and the involved supraclavicular node is known by the name wachos lymph node that can be asked as an mcq very important question
clear okay so this is all regarding the lymphatic spread i have not mentioned one important point here that is the sentinel lymph node that is most important mcq as well as most important to understand what is sentinel lymph node so that is the first regional lymph node that is receive the lymph from the primary tumor for example if you are having the carcinoma breast then the regional lymph node will be the axillary lymph node and among that axillary lymph node the first lymph node that is receiving the lymph that is receiving the lymph flow from the malignancy is known as a sentinel lymph node and you can identify such a first regional lymph node through injecting the dye or radio label tracer into the primary tumor clear so suppose this is your breast malignancy and here is the nearby first supplying lymph node this is the first regional lymph node clear those so that is known as sentinel lymph node so how can you identify such lymph node you have to inject radio labeled dye blue color dye into this tumor so that it will spread into the first regional lymph node and that is your sentinel lymph node and it should be sent for histopathological examination by taking the biopsy to check whether metastasis happen where happen or not so that you can determine the extent of spread of tumor and it can be used to plan the treatment so that is regarding the sentinel lymph node now we will discuss hematogenous spread i usually sarcoma prefer this hematogenous spread hematogenous spread means uh, spread through the blood clear so what is sarcoma yes you are right sarcoma is a mesenchymal tumor the mesenchymal tumor is known by the name sarcoma clear the mesenchymal tumor is known by the name sarcoma and it will spread it will prefer to spread via the blood hematogenous route so which are the common organs uh, that will uh, prefer the, that will involve by this metastasis if hematogenous spread happen then which are the common organs of involvement so these are the good common organs for metastasis liver lung brain bone kidney and the adrenal gland these eight are the most common organ involved by the metastasis and why the metastasis is common in such organ because this organ provide a good soil for the growth of tumor seed the sentence is written in the robbins pathological basis pathological basis of robbins so they will provide the enough blood flow and nutrition to grow the tumor seed that's why these are the good soil for the growth of tumor seeds clear and you have to remember the spleen is exception because it doesn't allow the tumor cell to reside there so spleen is very resistant for the metastasis okay now this is very important to understand and this can be asked as an mcq and it should be uh, you should write in the exam as well that which are the common organs of metastasis by hematogenous spread so see uh, what happen in our body uh, from the limbs from the pelvis from the head and neck from all these organ the blood is usually drained into the inferior vena cava clear and this inferior vena cava will open into the heart and through the lung and from the heart it will go into the the circulation will go into the lung for purification so the metastasis from the limb pelvis head and neck like that of malignancy can reach via the systemic vein into inferior vena cava and via inferior vena cava they can spread into the lung so the metastasis from the limb pelvis head and neck etc like tumor commonly spread to the lung so the most common site of metastasis is lung through the systemic veins but what happen uh, the blood from the bowel blood from the spleen blood from the pancreas usually drain into the liver through the portal vein so if you are having malignancy of bowel if you are having colorectal carcinoma splenic carcinoma or pancreas carcinoma then it commonly metastasizes to liver via portal vein 
so that you have to remember that metastasis via portal vein will be to the liver and metastasis via systemic will be systemic vein will be at the lung so this is the most important mcq and obviously as we have discussed artery is very resistance for the invasion now this is the figure that i have taken from the hersmon textbook of pathology you can see that uh, what happened when the tumor will reach into the different organs when it reached to the organs like uh, liver like uh, lung brain bone and kidney it will form the round multiple nodules over the organ and metastasis is seen in that way you can see the round nodules clear this is the multiple round nodules and this is the metastasis okay now third mode of spread is via transcelomic spread so that is that is the meaning of seeding seeding of the tumor cell through the natural body cavity i mean i want to say that what is transcelomic spread it is the spread by the seeding occurs when the neoplasm invade through the natural body cavity when the natural body cavity is invaded it is known as transcelomic spread the spread via serosal cavity so which are that natural serosal cavity in our body can you give me the name okay you are right the common cavities are the peritoneal cavity then uh, uh, then we have the pericardial cavity uh, then we have the pleural cavity so these three are the main cavity pleural pericardial and the peritoneal cavity but you have to remember that peritoneal cavity is involved most commonly and mostly transcelomic spread happen through the peritoneal cavity so that can be asked as an mcq that which is involved most commonly via transcelomic spread so that is the peritoneal cavity and which is the common malignancy that will prefer to spread into the peritoneal cavity so the answer will be your carcinoma ovary usually it will spread to peritoneum through the transcelomic spread so it will not prefer hematogenous or lymphatic spread but it will prefer transcelomic spread okay now what is krukenberg tumor suppose if you are having the malignancy of the stomach then via then it can spread through the transcelomic route into the ovary so that spread is known by the name krukenberg tumor it can be asked as an mcq what is krukenberg tumor it is a metastatic deposit in the ovary from the stomach okay now what happen second important mcq if you are having carcinoma of the ovary or appendix then sometime it might produce the mucin sometime you might have mucin producing carcinoma of the ovary or appendix and so that mucin will coat the peritoneum it can spread to the peritoneal cavity and it will coat your peritoneum so that gelatinous mucus coating of the peritoneum by the metastatic deposit of ovary or appendix is known by the name pseudomyxoma peritonei pseudomyxoma peritonei the other example of transcelomic spread is the carcinoma of the bronchus and the carcinoma of breast they will spread into the pleura and pericardium respectively so these are the whole about the discussion of transcelomic spread okay now we will see the spread via csf cerebrospinal fluid so suppose if you are having the malignant tumor of the ependyma or you are having the malignant medulloblastoma then via cerebrospinal fluid it can reach into the another portion of the csf so the tumor of the one portion will spread into the another portion of the cerebrospinal another portion of the cerebral system via the csf that is known as spread via cerebrospinal fluid so if you are having the a medulloblastoma tumor or ependymal tumor malignant tumor then it can spread via csf into the meninges so that is known as spread via csf so the tumors can spread via cerebrospinal fluid as well 
usually the intact epithelium and the mucus covering strongly resists the metastasis clear the tumor cell usually cannot invade the epithelium but there are few examples like uh, tumor spread through the bronchial wall into the alveoli and from the kidney into the lower urinary tract through the ureter the tumor can spread from the kidney into the lower ureter tract by the ureter that is known as spread via epithelial line surface last mode of spread is implantation it is very rare and here the spread is happened due to the implantation of the tumor cell through the surgeon's scalpel needle or suture it might be due to improper autoclaving if sterilization is not proper then sometime such type of implantation can happen theoretically but it is very rare so that is all regarding the spread of tumor so again i am summarizing remember this uh, six root of uh, spread there are mainly six root of metastasis lymphatic hematogenous transillomic spread via cerebrospinal fluid spread by epithelial line surface and implantation usually carcinoma prefer the lymphatic spread while sarcoma usually preferred hematogenous spread clear hope my video will be beneficial to you in understanding the spread of the tumor if you like my video subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever i am posting the new video thank you very much guys